Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being with me. I really, really enjoy our times together. So thank you for showing up. Do you ever wonder if you have a destiny that you're here to fulfill? Is there a plan to your life? Are the people you meet and interact with part of your destiny? Can you miss your destiny? Can you thwart your destiny? Or do you remain on track with your highest vision even when you're not in touch with it? Is that possible? Well, today I'd like to offer you some powerful ideas and examples of how we are on track with our destiny. And there is a plan for our life even when we don't know it. When I was in college, I was a psychology major and it came time for me to go to graduate school. And I, I was kind of a, in a fog at the time. I, I wasn't thinking real clearly. I wasn't real conscious. So I sent out maybe 10 applications to various schools, just a scattershot. And I was actually accepted at a pretty prestigious program at Lehigh University, a clinical psychology PhD program. But for some reason, I wasn't drawn to follow up on it. There was something about it that didn't speak to me, so I just let it go. And they kept sending me letters, are you coming, are you coming? I kept putting them off. And at the time, I was dating a young lady who was attending Montclair State College in New Jersey. She said, well, why don't you come to school with me one day? So I did. And the moment I stepped onto that campus, I, I knew I was home. And I thought it was the architecture I liked, but it was the, it was the divine architecture. And I thought, well, let me check into this place. So I went to the admissions office and the Dean of Admissions happened to be standing behind the desk at the moment. He asked me some questions. He said, would you like a scholarship? I said, well, sure. And I went away, I, went, I applied, and I went away to Europe for the summer. And while I was on my way, my mother told me I received a, a letter from a college. I'd been accepted, and I had been awarded a full scholarship, and I was appointed the position of assistant to the dean of students. <laughs> That's that first sign. So I went to my first course. I was in guidance and counseling. And I wasn't really interested in that subject, but it was the best thing they had, closest thing to what I wanted. And it was a state teacher's college, but there I was. And into the class walks a professor, a handsome man with white hair, and he puts a cassette play on the desk. And he says, here's my course in a nutshell. He presses the button, and I hear Sammy Davis Jr. singing, I gotta be me, I gotta be me. I thought, well, this guy's weird. <laughs> the teacher's weird. Because all the courses I had had in psychology until that time were dry. They were intellectual. They were not related to real living. And I was hungry for answers. I, I wanted to have meaning to my life. I wanted a sense of connection. And the book for the course was uh, by Dr. Carl Rogers, considered one of the founders of humanistic psychology. And I took the book home and I read it. And my soul was a fire. He was talking about authentic living and communicating and being yourself and reaching out and trusting and honoring your feelings and honoring your guidance and, and relaxing into uh, to be, to doing what you came to do without stress or struggle. And, and personal growth and, and self-realization, all these ideas just grabbed me. I thought, this is what I've been looking for. And I read the book in a weekend, and I said, wow, I somehow I was guided to this book. It's amazing. And as part of the course, we were asked to attend what they call the Human Relations Laboratory. It was the, They took a whole bunch of college students away for a weekend, and we went to a camp, and we, we, um, we related, we talked to each other, we talked about our lives, we talked about our feelings. And I had never done this before. And that weekend changed my entire life. It was as if a light went on. And I realized that there was so much more to life than I'd been living. And I, I was playing games and I was in my head and 
this got me into my heart and into my realness. And, and I met a fellow in that group who took me to my teacher, Hilda Charlton, who I studied with for 14 years. He took me to Ram Das. He took me to so many spiritual teachings that, that really made me an entirely new person. The person who I went to that college was not the same person who came out of that college. So I was on track with my destiny by dating that young lady and going to that school on that day and not being interested in that clinical PhD program. So it was all set up by my soul at a very deep level in concert with God's guidance. Now, sometimes destiny has a sense of humor. I read the work of Dr. Ihaleakala Hulen, who is a master teacher of the Hawaiian healing tradition of Ho'oponopono, balancing through forgiveness. And I wanted to meet him. I sent him some emails, and there was no way I could connect with him. He was busy, and I was busy. I had no idea if I'd ever meet him in hell. And then uh, one day I was on a lecture tour in Japan, and I had one night off, a two-week tour. And my sponsor called me. She said, there's a lecture in your hotel tonight. It's Dr. Hugh Lin. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to go? I said, well, sure. And so all I had to do to meet this man was to go down an elevator <laughs> to the ground floor. And my sponsor had graciously set up two front row seats with Dean, for Dean and myself. And I enjoyed the lecture very much. I learned a lot. I enjoyed meeting Dr. Hewlett. And it was a date with destiny. So the, <laughs> that evening was the answer to the question, how easy can it get? Do you really have to struggle and sacrifice and strain and pain to live your destiny? Or could there be a flow to it? Could it, be a, could it be a lot easier than you think? I've heard it said that when you're clear on the what, the universe takes care of the how. You don't have to strain over details on how to make this happen. You can let it happen instead. I was once giving a seminar on relationships and a young lady raised her hand and said, well, I really want to meet my soulmate, but I'm in North Carolina. And what if he's in California? <laughs> and I had to laugh. I said, well, you know, destiny is not really concerned with geography or timing or history or details. If you're supposed to meet this person, there'll be a way that you somehow put together in, in ways that far transcend anything you could arrange. People meet the right people for the right purpose at the right time in the right way. Now, I have a, a book coming out, as you know, soon called Soul and Destiny. Why you were here and what you came to do. It'll be coming at the end of April. And we're also having a, an eight-week webinar series, an intimate intensive webinar series on how destiny works and how soul works and how it's all connected. It'll be a very exciting, powerful series. If you want to join me, I'd love to have you. Go to my website, alancohen.com. It starts on May 11th and we'll, we'll go really, really deep. I promise it'll be very fulfilling. And as part of this program, uh, part of this book, I researched a number of amazing cases of how people fulfill their destiny. And there was one true story about a young couple in England. They were about 20 years old. They are about to get married. And they were looking through one of the family's photograph books. And they found a photograph uh, when uh, both the kids were about 10 years old. And this girl was on a particular beach with her family in England. And in the photograph, 10 paces away, was the boy and his family. They didn't know each other, they didn't talk to each other. And the, the, the girl's family lived like 300 miles away. It was very odd they would be at this beach. But here was this couple that was destined to meet and marry. And when the age of 10, they were in the same photograph. <laughs> Who organizes stuff like that? Well, Ram Dass used to talk about an organization called the CCCC the um, Cosmic 
Coincidence Control Center. <laughs> so this is an organization that Ram Dass also used to call it Central Casting, where all the right people get pulled together for the right purpose. So instead of trying to hammer our destiny out or squeeze it out of the universe or force things to happen, we do better by just flowing with life. Now Lao Tzu, Chinese sage, 2,500 years ago, 2,500 years ago, called this the Tao, the great way, the river of life. What he was saying was that there is a flow to life. And if you get with the flow, amazing things happen. Wonderful things happen. Now, the Star Wars series called this the Force. The Force is the same as the Tao, is the same as the flow. It's all the same. And you remember the blessing, may the Force be with you. Well, it's slightly inverted. The real blessing is, may you be with the Force. <laughs> because the Force is with you. The Force is. The Force is happening. But you may not know you're with it. And you're actually with it, but you don't know you're with it. So the real blessing is, may you know you're with the Force. And may you flow with the Force. That, that's the real blessing we want to go to. So the idea is that, Everything happens for a reason. Everything is part of destiny. Everything is part of the Tao. There's no person you meet that is unrelated to your destiny. Even somebody you stand next to in an elevator. Of course, in Miracles tells us that chance plays no part in God's plan. There's no such thing as chance. No such thing as random. No such thing as accident. It's all connected. Even who you stand next to in an elevator, as I said. Once I was in an elevator in Hawaii in a hotel, and there was a couple in the elevator with me. And I asked them, how's your vacation going? And the lady said, well, okay. And usually people in Hawaii are having a good time on their vacation. So, well, what's going on? She said, well, I have this kidney stone. It's kind of painful, and I think I might need surgery. I'm not having a fun vacation. And I, I had heard from some of my friends that there's a flush you can do, like a holistic flush where, and I told her, I said, you know, you can take some garlic and lemon. I said, I don't know exactly what it is. I haven't taken it myself, but I do know friends who've had stones and they've taken this flush and it's gotten them out of pain. In some cases, they avoided surgery. She said, well, let me try that. Sounds good. I said, look it up on the web. So I left the elevator. I never heard from him again. I do not know what happened after that. But I, I do know that she lit up when I told her about this possibility. Maybe she followed up on it. Maybe she got out of pain. Maybe she avoided surgery. I do not know. But I do know there was a purpose for us standing in the elevator together. God sent it to me and me to them. It was a mutual destiny that somehow we fulfilled. So everyone, everyone, everyone is part of the great plan. A Course in Miracles says that, that every encounter is a holy encounter, meaning that it's set up by God. And when you can unfold the purpose for which it's set up, miracles happen. Some of you know my friend Nishank. He's an Indian man who um, helped me with my Course in Miracles webinar series. A lovely fellow. Lives in Mumbai. Well, about four years ago, he read my book, A Course in Miracles Made Easy. And he was really touched and inspired by the book. And he read a passage to Mother who was quite ill. And his mother had a miraculous healing as a result of hearing the principles in that passage. So Nishan wanted to connect with me. And he looked on my website and he saw they had this course in coach training. And he didn't understand the advertisement. It was really a six-month course, but he thought it was a one-hour a one coaching session with me. And the course was $3,000, and he said, well, if I have to pay $3,000 to talk to this guy for an hour, I will. And we had a wonderful interaction, and I, I told him this was really, he'd really enrolled in a six-month course. And he said, well, I'll, I'll try it. Who knows? Maybe I'll get something out of it. So he participated, and he became so excited about the principles and holistic life coaching that he actually quit his job in the diamond, diamond industry. He had a very lucrative job as a diamond salesman. And he let go of that and he threw himself into life coaching full time. 
and he built up a substantial practice. And now he's teaching courses in India, teaching Course in Miracles courses, life coach training courses. And he actually set up our first holistic life coach training course for Indians. And I'm starting it tomorrow. It's a, a brand new course. And we have a good number of students and we'll teach them the principles and they will coach people and they will fan out into India. And there's like 1.4 billion people in India. So these principles are now working their way out into the Indian population. What a blessing that is. And all because somehow in the Shank found my book, somehow he liked, somehow he called me. He thought he was signing up for a one hour session that turned out to be a six month course. And his life is utterly different. So A Course in Miracles says that when you do a miracle, which means an act of love that is guided by God, it may go on to touch many, many, many thousands of people that you never hear about. And so this, my friends, is how our destinies are interwoven. If you are watching this program, it's because our destinies have been set by spirit to touch for some reason, hopefully receiving something out of the talk. I certainly receive something by knowing you're there and the lovely comments you write on, on YouTube. There's a, there's a great web. You think the internet is something? Well, <laughs> how about the internet? How about that inner system where love guides us to connect for the right and perfect purpose? So Jesus said, cast your bread upon the water and it shall return to you, which means you take one step toward fulfilling what you believe might be your destiny. You even take steps that you think are not related to destiny. And these steps that are guided will return to you in many, many ways. And from you following your inner guidance or trusting your inner guidance or being in your right place, destiny embraces you in its great arms and is bringing infinite blessings to you and to everyone you touch. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.